Welcome to our The China Briefing program. Today, we delve into the exciting world of AI as Shanghai-based startup StepFun believes in the potential of large language models and the scaling laws that govern their development. Founder Jiang Dashin envisions a future where these models boast hundreds of trillions of parameters, despite China's current technological disadvantages. StepFun recently launched a trillion-parameter LLM called Step2, aiming to unify generative and comprehension capabilities within a single model. Next, the London Metal Exchange, LME, is planning to authorize a new warehouse in Hong Kong, facilitating the physical exchange of metals between mainland China and the rest of the world. This move is expected to enhance metals pricing, arbitrage opportunities, and support Hong Kong's economic integration into the Greater Bay Area. The Hong Kong government is likely to back this plan, adding a significant boost to the region's economic landscape. Lastly, China and the Philippines have agreed to de-escalate tensions in the South China Sea after months of maritime confrontations. Both nations have pledged to continue dialogue to ensure peace and security in the region, despite external pressures and the complexities of bilateral relations. The right approach to resolving territorial disputes is through negotiation rather than confrontation. Please stay tuned for detailed coverage on these stories. South China Morning Post Jiang Dashin, the founder of Shanghai-based AI startup StepFun, emphasizes the importance of scaling laws in the development of large language models, LLMs, despite China's challenges in investment and advanced chip technology. Speaking at the World Artificial Intelligence Conference in Shanghai, Jiang highlighted that LLMs could eventually reach hundreds of trillions of parameters, showing improved performance with larger models, more data, and greater computational resources. However, he noted that diminishing returns are a concern. Tech giants like Amazon, Microsoft, and Meta have heavily invested in advanced technology, validating the scaling laws. Since the launch of OpenAI's ChatGPT in late 2022, over 200 AI models have emerged in China, including Alibaba's Tongyi Chenwen and Baidu's Ernie. StepFun, founded in April 2023, has focused on developing fundamental models and officially launched Step2, a trillion-parameter LLM, along with multimodal models. Jiang stressed the importance of multimodality for constructing world models and aims to unify generative and comprehension capabilities within a single model. Alex Zhu Jifeng of Chiming Venture Partners, an early investor in StepFun, mentioned that AI investments are increasingly directed towards applications benefiting from decreasing token costs. Economist Peng Wensheng projected that China's AI market could reach 5.2 trillion yuan by 2030. South China Morning Post. The London Metal Exchange, LME, has a strategic plan to authorize a new warehouse in Hong Kong, which its owner, Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing, HKEX, supports enthusiastically. This warehouse will facilitate the physical exchange of metals like aluminium and zinc between mainland China and the rest of the world. Given China's status as the largest importer of raw commodities, the move seems overdue. The LME, which authorizes third-party operators to run storage for LME-registered metals, has a global network of 450 warehouses, including locations in Japan, South Korea, Malaysia, Singapore, and Taiwan. Hong Kong's new warehouse will bridge delivery time gaps and reduce logistics costs, enhancing metals pricing and arbitrage opportunities, according to HEX CEO Bonnie Chan Yiting. The rise in green technologies will likely increase demand for metals crucial to electric vehicles and solar panels. Hong Kong's existing logistics, infrastructure, and international financial facilities make it an ideal location. The LME is addressing legal and tax issues and seeking a suitable operator for a 10,000-square-meter warehouse. This initiative will also integrate Hong Kong economically into the Greater Bay Area, aligning with local government priorities. The Hong Kong government, as the largest shareholder of HKEX, can play a significant role in resolving legal, tax, and land allocation issues to advance this promising plan. South China Morning Post after months of maritime confrontations in the South China Sea, China and the Philippines have finally sat down for talks in Manila, agreeing to de-escalate tensions in the disputed region. This development marks the first positive step in their strained relationship for months. One of the most serious incidents occurred at 2nd Thomas Shoal in mid-June, 
where the Chinese Coast Guard intercepted a Philippine naval mission, resulting in injuries to eight Philippine sailors. The US condemned China's actions and reaffirmed its defense obligations to the Philippines under a 1951 treaty. Former Chinese ambassador to the US, Kui Tienkai, suggested that external interference has exacerbated tensions and called for efforts to eliminate it, aiming for healthier bilateral ties. However, this may be optimistic given the current US administration's critical stance on China's actions and calls from former officials for more active intervention. Public sentiment in the Philippines has turned against China, mirrored by anti-Manila sentiments on Chinese social media. Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has taken a balanced approach, avoiding China-US geopolitical tensions and focusing on Malaysian interests. He continues to do business with China while not antagonizing the US. The right approach to resolving territorial disputes is through negotiation, not confrontation, as hostility undermines security and benefits no one. It is hoped that China and the Philippines will continue dialogue to resolve their differences for peace and security in the South China Sea and Asia. Associated Press, in Asuncion, Paraguay, the Mercosur trade bloc faced a critical moment as Argentine President Javier Milley skipped the summit to attend a right-wing rally in Brazil. Milley's absence highlighted the deep divisions within South America's largest trade alliance, which has been plagued by political volatility and protectionism over the years. Established in 1991, Mercosur aimed to foster economic integration among Argentina, Brazil, Paraguay, and Uruguay. However, the bloc has struggled to achieve significant trade liberalization, with intrabloc trade remaining low and few external trade deals. Uruguay's unilateral move to negotiate with China outside the bloc and Milley's call for Argentina to exit Mercosur have further strained relations. Despite some optimistic discussions about future deals with countries like the UAE, South Korea, and Japan, the summit's low expectations and Milley's absence underscore the bloc's uncertain future. South China Morning Post, as students in Hong Kong receive their International Baccalaureate, IB, and Diploma of Secondary Education, DSE, test scores, the focus shifts from the results to the broader implications of the education system. While high scores are often seen as a measure of success, the true essence of education lies beyond standardized testing. The pressure to excel in these tests has led to a culture of intense competition, with affluent families investing in after-school tutorials and test prep courses to give their children an edge. This has exacerbated educational inequality, as access to resources heavily influences test outcomes. The IB program, which is more holistic and considers schoolwork, is often preferred over the content-heavy DSE, which relies on memorization. The recent IB cheating scandal further highlights the pressures students face. Ultimately, the goal should be to foster critical thinking and lifelong learning, rather than merely achieving high test scores. Bloomberg, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Russia marks his first trip there in five years, amidst Russia's growing alignment with China. Modi's meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin aims to reaffirm the historical ties between the two nations, despite the geopolitical tensions arising from Russia's war in Ukraine and its closer ties with China. India, heavily reliant on Russian weapons and oil, seeks to maintain a balanced relationship while addressing the trade imbalance, with India importing significantly more from Russia than it exports. Modi's visit, diverging from the tradition of visiting neighboring countries first, signals India's strategic priorities. The discussions are expected to cover future arms deals, trade issues, and regional security concerns, particularly China's actions in the Indo-Pacific. Modi's trip underscores India's complex diplomatic balancing act between Russia, China, and the West, as it navigates its own national interests in a rapidly shifting global landscape. South China Morning Post, Jeffrey Sachs, an economics professor at Columbia University, critiques the US's attempts to contain China. He argues that these strategies, including trade agreements designed to exclude China, export bans on high-tech products, and increased militarization, have only heightened tensions and economic inefficiencies. Sachs believes these policies stem from American anxiety over its waning global influence. 
he asserts that China's technological advancements in sectors like photovoltaics and electric vehicles will sustain its economic growth, especially as the US and Europe turn protectionist. Sachs also highlights the potential for China to strengthen its trade and financial relations with emerging markets through initiatives like the Belt and Road. However, he cautions that the US's deep state, comprising security institutions and major arms contractors, continues to drive an aggressive foreign policy that could lead to conflict, particularly in Taiwan and the South China Sea. Sachs calls for a return to diplomacy, warning that the current trajectory of US-China relations mirrors the miscalculations that led to the Ukraine war. Nikkei Asia, the trial of Vonarat Tankrava Kuhn, a member of one of Thailand's wealthiest families, has exposed significant flaws in Thai corporate governance. Vonarat and other executives of Stark Corporation, a Bangkok-listed wire maker, are accused of defrauding investors of nearly 15 billion baht. The scandal erupted when Thailand's Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, charged them with falsifying financial statements to secure debenture offerings. Years of bogus sales and rising input costs led PwC to question Stark's financial health, triggering a bond default and a collapse in its share price. This has shaken investor confidence in the Thai market, already weakened by political instability. The case has led to multiple class action lawsuits, with plaintiffs seeking damages of up to 27 billion baht, potentially the largest sum for a tort in Thai history. Former employees revealed that Stark's financial records were manipulated to maintain a facade of profitability, and funds raised for investments were misused to cover debts. The SEC and the Stock Exchange of Thailand have since introduced new rules to improve corporate governance, but Thailand's recent ranking on the Asian Corporate Governance Association's report card has fallen, indicating a need for more robust enforcement and oversight. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.